It is Thanksgiving weekend. Got a snooze and pup. Good morning, Casey. Let's uh, stroll over to the spray bench and see what we can come up with this morning. Let's teach you guys how to make something new and exciting. Fish heads, fish heads, good morning. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Okay, this is going to be a pretty easy creation to pull off. It um, takes a little bit of finessing to get the colors and the fades right, but we're going match the hatch today. Um, this video is going to be powered by Caden Harris. So Caden, Davey, and family out in Stone Gap, Virginia, if you guys are listening today, Thanks for supporting the channel. You guys are awesome. And uh, this, this uh, actually, the video is going to be all about you guys. So I got a request for a couple of things today. One of the things that we're going to be doing is a flat side creek mountain, basically an Appalachian Mountain sucker fish. And the reason that these little guys are important is that when they're juveniles, now they don't get huge. And the smallmouth in the creeks and streams, I, I lived in Virginia for about 10 years. And I have trout fished out there. Um, I've been at Hungry Mother, which is a cool lake out there. It's pretty decent if you know how to fish it right. So there's a lot of opportunities to catch some really decent fish in Virginia. Lake Smith, by the way, is world class. So there's just some cool stuff. But we're, we're going to go a little bit downsized today. We're going to be focusing on creek match the hatch. And this is going to be a hog sucker. And it is a, a Dinger Custom Baits Pressing. It's a flat side DCB. And one of the neat things that you want to make sure of when you're putting these things together, they don't come with the circuit board lip installed in them. And there's a couple of reasons that, that he does that. Number one, it ships from overseas. So it has a higher uh, incident of snapping, not, not running true. The other thing that, that I'm, I'm actually kind of getting into these flat sides, so you want to make sure that when you put the lip in, that it runs true. So one of the things that I like to do is I'll get out an exact knife, and I'll just come along the interior of the lip just a little bit, and make sure that this is even, that there's no burrs in the plastic. Just peel off a little bit, and then we're going to put the lip in, and before we glue and seal the lip, which is going to be item number one to do once this is installed, we need to make sure that it's not crooked because if it's crooked, the bait's not going to run true. So now that we have that cleared out, we want to make sure that this fits in. And it needs to be a very tight fit, and it is. And before we get all the way in, you want to take a look at the front of that bait and make sure that this is perpendicular. You really want that 90 degree angle. And you can pretty much see it if I can get close with the camera here. Um, you can see where the seam is right here in the middle of this flat side. You just want to kind of look at it as a T-square. You guys know what T-squares are when you're looking to make sure that the angle is true, or the true 90 degrees. And this one definitely is. So we're not going to need any further tuning than that. I'm going to pull this back out and we're going to glue it real quick. And be real gentle when you're pulling these out. You don't want to pull them in and out too many times because that will make it not butt up against the plastic the way it should. You don't want to thin this down is what I'm saying. You want to work with your plastic and not the circuit board because this is much more brittle than the plastic on this. So let's get some glue. I'm going to put some on the tip here and then I'm also going to put some on the, uh, the little, I call it a keyhole, but I'm going to put some on the hole in the plastic itself. And you can do that pretty easily with one hand. Just run that right through there. Run it all the way across so that you've got that lip opening up. Let this run down towards the bait. You might get a little bit of glue on you. That's okay. Just make sure that you don't have lumps or bumps in this circuit board and you need to kind of work quickly with this 
make sure that gets in there right. Make sure that's a good fit and that it's even this way. You don't want it hanging out too much one way or the other. Make sure that this kind of bends back in because it'll go side to side on you. And that it is 100% 90 degree angle. We have both of those things accomplished. And I'm just going to set this in if I can do it, if I can do it right. I'm just going to set this up here to dry just for a little bit and we'll come right back. So we're ready for the next step. Let's take a look at that. Looks pretty good. We can go ahead and tape this up. If you tape it too soon, right after you've glued this, then you run the risk of getting some really nasty tape stuck to this. So let's go ahead and get this taped up today. Just take a couple of steps here. Run that all the way to the back of the bait there. And do the same thing with each side, so you're kind of making a cross, and then just run this along the back. Okay, you can leave this as it is. Um, usually, since I have a tendency to work with stencils on occasion, I don't think we'll need one for this. Um, because it's a pretty simple pattern, but I, I kind of like to make sure that this is cleaned up a little bit. You don't have a whole bunch of tape sticking off the side of it. So the next thing we're ready to do, pop this into the alligator clips on our helping hands. And I'm not going to do a full white primer on this. Um, a lot of the times anymore what I'll do, especially if I'm doing a match the hatch and a minnow where the belly is going to be a little bit transparent anyways, I'm going to load the paintbrush or the uh, airbrush this morning with some FW Pearl. This stuff. Just give it a couple of shakes. And this is a, a fairly heavy pearl. So our belly and sides is going to be exclusively this pearl. We're running the airbrush around 38 to 40. I mean, you can just see that sheen. And you almost get a feathered effect. And that's going to be a good thing, folks, because when we recoat this with brown over top, it's going to give the appearance of scales without even trying. So that's a little happy accident that I came across when I was painting another bait, and that's run through. I am going to do a quick heat set on this because I don't want this to lay down. I want to keep this a little bit feathered, a little bit blotchy to give that appearance of scales. Just on the sides. But it almost adds a depth that you would find, and if uh, hopefully the camera can pick this up. You guys are seeing what I'm seeing, but you can see just a little bit of blotchiness, which is gonna provide you a little bit more depth because this is a pretty straightforward pattern. So the more natural that you can make this bait, the better off you're gonna be. And it's yet another reason why I really am getting into these FW paints. Um, they shoot a little bit thinner for the most part, even the pearls. Pearls need to be shot a little bit higher pressure. Now, we are going to add, where's my opaque white? Got some of this to use up. I've gotten some golden, and uh, it is a world of difference. So I'm going to recommend the golden, but this will do just fine for what we're doing today. Just add a little bit. We don't need to add a whole lot, because again, it's going to be a, a little bit of a transparency to this bait. kind of fade down the sides. 
get the nose and the back. So now you can really start to see where the opaque is kind of fading in and adding to that 3D kind of depth of field that we've got going on with this paint. I'm going to use a couple of different browns in this. And this is just, this is a very light accented type bait. Because once this heat sets, we're going to add some gold and scaling to this. There we go. And you see how I'm shooting this at an angle. Shooting at an angle down the side of a bait really helps with depth. It also helps with a fade because you get a lot less than if you hit it head on. There's too much of a contrast there, especially when you're trying to run one color into another and one's a lot darker than the other. You pull that airbrush back and shoot it at an angle down the side of that bait and I guarantee you're going to be happy with the results. We're just going to load the top of this a little bit heavier. We don't want this to be this orange, so we're going to be coming back and topping this with sepia. And that sepia is just more of a, a darker tone. So we are going to be doing a couple of stages to this. Again, this is not a, a very difficult pattern to do, but you do want to get it right because you are matching the hatch. And for those of you that are brand spanking new to airbrushing and maybe even to angling and airbrushing, when we talk about matching the hatch, you hear it a lot in trout fishing, but you hear it in bass fishing too. That means that we want to create a lure that looks very similar, if not closely identical, to a forage fish that you would find in real life. So you want to really get some, you don't want to go too dark on this, but we are going to come back with some gold. But you can see, if you're looking down the side of this, I'm hoping that the camera can pick up what I'm doing. You can see how this is really taking on that depth because you have the white underneath and then as we're shooting down it's even accenting the gill plates on this bait which I like. Then we have that darker sepia color and then we're going to come back and do this side because we're kind of doing one at a time. We don't want to spray this real heavy. You do want to employ some light trigger control on this and now we have something that looks not bad. Not bad, we're getting there. We're going to heat set this and come right back. We have heat set this completely and we are now adding in a little bit of scaling to this. Word of caution though, if you guys start working with FW, the liquid acrylics, because it is thinner, uh, it also comes apart a little bit easier. So you don't really want to move this around once you have the scales in place, all you really want to do is just clamp down lightly. We're not going to be adding a whole lot of layering to this. We're going to add just a little bit of gold and fade that down into silver to create the scales, which is why we've got darker on top lighter going down the sides. So I've got some gold loaded into this chamber here. It's a Wada Eclipse. It's an HPCS. And we want to keep that real light. Shoot the rest of this out of the chamber. Set our bait down long enough to pick up just a little bit of this pearl silver. Not much. We don't need a whole lot of that. Don't want to overkill. 
Now we're going to shoot from the belly up. Kind of create that reverse effect. But again, we're angling our brush as we go, which helps with the fade. It really does. You're saying, but it's covering the depth. No, the depth is put in there in place. And you're still going to see it a little bit, even with this. We're going to heat set this with the scales on. And we're going to add a little bit of that sepia back in, just a little bit on the top and around the eyes. And we're going to do that with the scales on. Real light on this, you guys. Super light. Suckers are just as silvery as they are brown. But you really don't want too much of either. You kind of want that good blend, good mix. And then the very last thing that we're going to add back in is our pearl FW white. Just mix that up a little bit. And you notice I'm not cleaning my chamber out. This is a pretty quick one. There's not a whole lot going on. We will shade the eyes, but only after I take the scales off. But this, right now, we're just doing for the scales. I want to give that appearance of shimmer. And a quick heat set. And we're just about done with this. Suckerfish are fairly easy to replicate, but you really want to finesse the pattern. Add a few scales in. And maybe just a little bit of shading around the eyes. We are going to be using silver eyes. Now there's a few different kinds of suckerfish. There's your ordinary, there's your hog, red horse suckerfish. And we've got a fair amount of red horse here in the Ozarks where I live. Caden and his family live in Virginia. Just rip that off like a band-aid now. You can see you almost have a carp pattern. You could probably mimic a carp pattern with this as well. Get away with that. But you still have that fairly clear belly. We're going to just brush this off. Because a lot of the times when you pull off a, a scale or any kind of webbing that you use, it'll just pull the paint enough to make it a nuisance. So you want to kind of smooth that out. You don't want to sand it. You want to keep the integrity of the pattern and the scales. Like there's like a little tiny piece pulling up here. Now that will go away when you clear coat as well. And then we're just going to take, and this, again, this is just a silvery pattern. I'm going to do a little bit of a red here on the gill plates, both sides. And a little bit of black to shade around the eyes. We're going to add in our side fin. And we're going to add just a little bit of blush red back here on the butt of the bait. Now I'm not going to even use a true red for this. I'm going to add just a little bit of sunset red on the throat. And as I add into the throat, it's kind of going to catch the gill plates because of the angle of this brush here. So it will give the effect of having some red some natural effects in the gill right there. And then just a little bit on the sides back here. Not much. A lot of the times I call that a bullseye. I give, I give a little target area right there for the fish to key in on. And we're going to add just a little bit into the eyes. They have silver eyes. go and now just a little bit of black we're gonna load it in this chamber keep the pressure low let me go grab my side uh, fin 
you know, I don't know why I can't. Every time I blank out on the word pectoral. It's a pectoral fin. I should know that as many years in biology as I spent. But we're going to actually create the pectoral fin right here. Just very small. Now for this, all I'm doing is I'm just making a almost a triangular pattern. And it's going to come off of this bottom gill plate here. Keep it real small because it's a fairly small bait. A lot of people ask me what I use for these. I, I'm pretty simple with I try and reuse as much as I possibly can. So all this is really is a Bill Lewis set lock hook backing, the cardboard backer out of a box of hooks. If you guys can see that behind there, you can see the pattern that it has. It's going to go on the bait like this. You just want to set it down easy. You want to line this up. Now you'll be able to see when you look through here, you'll be able to see where the gill plate is. And it's right there. So just bring it a little bit where you know, a little bit below where the medial line would be. Nice light. Just bring it off like that. I'm going to flip the bait over. And when you flip the bait over, you want to clean this off a little bit, then use the other side. I'm just going to lay this down like that. Find that again on here. That's it. Pretty easy. Maybe just a little bit of shading around the edges of the eye. Definitely don't want to go too dark on this pattern. Well, some folks don't even bother with shading. I do if I'm going to be using a silver eye or a lighter eye because I kind of want to accentuate the eyes on here. So that is our basic pattern. Well, let's go ahead and get some eyes on this. For this, I'm going to be using fish skull living eyes. Um, these flat sides take a 6 millimeter. drop. We've taken off the tape from the lip. You always want to make sure the point of the pupil faces forward. Drop that down. And do the same thing with the other side. Just drop that right into the eye socket. You can see the difference. It's also really going to come to life with this shading on here once we get the, uh, the clear coat on. Sign the name. I'm just about done with this bait. This is a cool little pattern. Um, good customer request. Love the customers that want to match the hatch, especially if they're downsizing or doing a little finesse or creek fishing. It's really important that these fish, fish have a tendency to spook a little bit easier in clear water creeks, which is kind of where this is going to be targeting fish. Uh, my customer said that he is targeting smallmouth, and they eat suckers. So there we go. Now we've got this attached, slide this stuff out of the way. We've got the hanging wire right there, let's get this off of here. And we are set to dip. Make sure it dips evenly. Now 
and then real quick as you're pulling this out you want to pull it out slow but you also want to make sure that there's no bubbles that have gotten in at the eyes and I don't see any which makes me happy I'm just going to slide this on and then pull this over here and we will do the reveal at the end of this video